Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is the first of several I'm going to make as I prepare for the Red Hat Certified Specialist in Containers Exam EX188. Before I dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video, as well as invite anyone who hasn't subscribed yet to click the subscribe button and ring the bell when you do. And if you enjoy the video, make sure you click like. So like I've done with other Red Hat exams, I'm making my practice sessions ahead of actually taking the exam. Make sure that you note that these are not tutorials, but rather these are me going, these are sessions of me going through the various objectives and such to assess if I feel like I actually know what I'm talking about and if I can do some of the tasks that would likely be on the exam related to the objectives. And the idea behind this is I will do these, do the assessment. And if I feel like I know what I'm talking about, awesome. If not, then I still have just under three weeks to uh, do a little brushing up on some things before I take the exam. I do try to have the information as, um, as accurate as possible, but do keep in mind these are practice sessions rather than, you know, official tutorials and such. Also, one other thing to keep in mind, this exam, unlike RHCE and RHCSA, doesn't seem like it's tied to a particular version of RHEL, even though I think it's going to be RHEL 8 when, when I take the exam. But this is being recorded in early 2023, so just keep that in mind if you happen to um, come across these videos later in the future if you were preparing for the EX188 exam. I'm a bit critical of how the objectives are written for this exam. It's not a kind of sequential kind of thing that you have in some of the other Red Hat exams. So as a result, videos like this today, I'm going to cover several different little objectives rather than have, you know, 30 second videos of something that's, that's pretty quick. So I'm going to focus in the implement images using Podman section and focus on the first five objectives, which are using these instructions from add, run and copy and talk about the differences between add and copy. I encourage you, if you're also preparing for this exam or any other exam, you do something similar to this. You give yourself this assessment of a few weeks out from the exam just to give yourself a checkpoint and to hopefully, you know, eliminate some anxiety. So you're not, you know, cramming right up to the exam learning stuff. You have kind of finished the learning part and you're in this review mode. So we're going to open up the terminal and we will get started. So this is talking about really using container files. And when you're um, building an image for your container, you know, there's container repositories that or rather image repositories that have all, all sorts of images and such, but eventually you will probably need to, to make your own. Now, me coming from the system administration space rather than the, the development space, I may or may not be you know, making several images and such, but um, even if you're not a developer and you are in system administration, you need to understand how this process works. So we're gonna start a container file. Actually, before I start a container file, I'm gonna search for the um, name of an image. So we'll do podman search and I'm going to search just for HTTPD because I know there's an image out there that we can use for this, um, this demonstration and web servers tend to be what get picked on for exam stuff because they're relatively simple. You don't have to do any type of complicated configuration and it's good for examples. I do want to make a mention that you see um, by the, by default, it's going to be searching registry.redhat.com. It'll also be searching registry.redhat.io, which that is, and by default, I mean the default installation of Podman on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. You have to authenticate to registry.redhat.io. So I'm going to be using just registry.redhat.com or registry.access.redhat.com for these, just where I don't have to worry about doing authentication. I'm sure, I, th I think there's an objective later that I have to do authentication, so we'll obviously practice that. Here's an HTTPD image. And notice I'm um, I'm going to be copying the full, I think it's fully qualified image name. Uh, I think it's the official term for it. Just because just doing HTTPD 2.4, well, we have just right here two different images for that. So when possible, always use that fully qualified name. And the first instruction we're going to look at is from. And all the from instruction does in your container file is say, all right, here is the base image that we are going to 
start at with building your own image, because remember images are done in layers and, um, you know, each, each instruction or each thing that you add to the image adds a different storage layer because eventually, you know, you'll have your image, it's run as a container and there's a layer put on top that is actually a writable layer. All the other layers are Im immutable. And probably as I go through some of these, um, these objectives, I'll go into some more details and such about that. It's really kind of tough to have. All right. So here's the video on just images because there's so much stuff to go into it. But anyway, I'll start my container file. You might be able to use other file names for that. I'm pretty sure you can. We may experiment with that um, a little bit later in the video. And I encourage you on your own to do experiments like that because sometimes I can help you learn, try to break stuff, understand why it breaks, and then you'll have a better understanding of why you should do it the, you know, the correct way. So we'll do from, and I'm going to paste in my image. So technically this is all that I need for the container file is, all right, we have to pull a base image from somewhere. As a matter of fact, if I were to just save this, and if I were to do podman build, the tag we're going to give this is just test image, and dot is, it's going to use the, um, the file that's in your current directory, and by default it recognizes container file is a file from which you can build an image. And after a few moments, the image completes. I can do podman images or podman image ls, and we see my um, local test image on localhost, same size as the um, UB9 universal base image from Red Hat, same size as UB9 HTTPD 2.4 because it effectively is the exact same image. I haven't made any changes to it. I've just said, you know, from pull down this image and we're going to be doing all of our other stuff to it. So the next instruction we're going to talk about is like my little list here is the run instruction. So from pulls down what our base image is going to be the run instruction are commands and such that you execute against the image. So for example, I go back to my container file. I have my HTTPD image. Let's say that I want to run, you know, cause I'm, I'm, I'm going to customize this to whatever my application would need. I want to create a user called test user. So user add test user. And so what will happen on, on this container, it'll run as root and, or rather when it's building this image, it's going to run as root in that and do test user. And I can do several run commands if I want. Let's do echo. Um, here is a test file. And we're going to save that in root. Actually, we'll just do, we'll do temp. So temp my, i got to do file redirection. Temp my test file. And then you can probably hear the fan of my laptop spinning up. Hopefully that's not going to be too loud. And also we want to install, so I'm pretty sure the, the, this image actually has the full DNF in it. Let's say that we want to install Nginx. That'll be fun. This Apache image, but we'll have Nginx. Let's see if this works. So we have our from instruction, and then we're going to do three different run instructions, which are effectively are just running commands on our image. We'll do podman build. And this time we'll call it test image two. Of course, I could just use the same image name. It'll just override it. Ah, so it is not running as root. You know, that, actually that makes sense because one of the big things with, um, with security is you, you, you try to avoid running things as root as you, as you can on a container. And I'll bet that's what's going on because this container it's getting a little bit out of the scope of what I was wanting to do with this, but let's inspect this container here. I'm willing to bet this container does not run as root. And the container I'm looking at is the one from Red Hat. I might just need to use the UBI container without HTTPD. Yeah, this is going to be using user 1001, which is not going to be root. I may be able to going to try this with the uh, user directive to see if we can become effectively become root with this. I don't think this is going to work, but we can try it. We'll just use that same test image too. 
Oh, it did work. Excellent. Cool. We'll have to pull it, pull down another image. Now, one thing I do want to bring to your attention is the step one, you know, from this, this particular, uh, this image. Notice I didn't have to download the stuff because this particular base image is already on my local machine. There's no need to, to download it again. And each of these has made another layer. And then let's see, no such, you would think I'd know how to use DNF after, you know, having some years working with Linux. DNF install dash Y Nginx. Let's see if that works better and gives us a usable image. One thing to note, if you're using the UBI images, you're going to get the complaint about the system not being registered. That is a normal thing. These UBI images are what Red Hat has given to the world as, all right, use our stuff to build your containers. You don't have to do your subscription management with these. And after a moment, we see that the test image has been completed, or rather it has been built. And we see it here, test image two, and it's a couple hundred megabytes larger, which makes sense because we have, um, we installed Nginx. And there was also some storage used with some of the other commands, even though we were just uh, making the user and then making that simple little text file. Now, if I wanted to, just to verify that, um, that these files and such were made, I'm just going to run a quick container run. Uh, we'll do it rm because we want this container to go away after we run it and we'll do test image two and run the we'll run bin bash i think bash is on it <laughs> bash will work better than ba probably should say ba when i make that mistake so if we remember we had um we made that user so if i were to tail at c pass wd we should see our test user, or we had that instruction that made test user. And we also made a file in the temp directory. So let's ls temp, and there's my test file, and cat that, and we see we have our test file. We're gonna get out of the container. Container's gone because remember I used the dash dash rm to make sure the container goes away. And if I were to go back into our container file, we see our user add, so all, all of that, that stuff happened. Now, one thing to keep in mind is one of the big deals with containers is it has a far smaller storage footprint than virtual machines. And that's by design. You're only putting the stuff in the container needed to run whatever application that, that this container is, is going to run. You're not needing to virtualize the entire operating system and all of its bits. So whenever we can write our... Um, or make our container images as lean as possible, the better. And I'm going to show you something that you will probably be using a decent bit to achieve this. So here I have three different run commands, which are going to create three more layers on top of the base image that we're using here, the HTTPD-24 image. But what we can do is combine some of this. So think about your normal commands that you run in bash, you know, you can, you know, if you want to run three commands, but have them just all be on one line, we can use the double ampersand, which is basically if this command returns successfully, then run the next command. So we're going to do that here and we're going to bring up the echo and you can also use the, um, backslash to come to a, another line. Of course, I would need to put the ampersands before that because we're actually running another command and we'll get rid of this last line here. So we've combined those three run run line commands into a single run command. That's basically, or a single run instruction that is going to be running three commands as a part of that. And let's see what the difference is in the resulting um, container image. So podman build dash T we'll call this test image three. And of course, I could just do you know, test image with different tags, but we're doing test image three. And notice for step two of three, it is using an existing uh, layer. And that is because it is identical to the layer that would have been created as a part of our uh, previous efforts for creating container images. Containers are, uh, or 
images and such are all about trying to reuse as much stuff as possible. Clear my screen here. Oh, it ended up being the same size. Boo. You know, I'll bet this because of the, the Nginx stuff. I know if you are doing um, multiple run things that, or you know, hmm. So here's what we're going to do. We'll keep our instruction there. So I know this is a thing. I have I've tested it before and, and found it to be true. And, you know, what's the famous thing in IT? Hey, it works for me. Well, it usually does, but I want to actually show here that it, it will work for folks. So I'll do DNF install. Let's install oh, LibreOffice. Is that still in RHEL 8? I know it was taken out. They haven't taken out with RHEL 9. But we'll see what happens. And while we're at it, we'll do another instruction of DNF install. Um, it's another good package to install. It's probably not on this image. It'd be hex chat. Pretty sure that that's going to be in the rail reposal IRC client. You do podman build. HT. We'll call this test image four. Oh, built. Spelling does count on your Red Hat exams. Okay, this this should famous last words in IT, right? When we do the um, the improved version of this, this should give us a smaller resultant image. All right, I got hung a bit on hex chat, and I think for the final video that I put on the YouTube, I'll edit out some of the waiting just so you're not sitting there watching it go. But let's take a look at this image. And we see this is a gigabyte large. So let's go back to our container file. And now we'll just do a single DNF and see if the container is smaller. Do test image five for this one. At the very least, it takes less time for the uh, building of the image to run simply because we've combined DNF, you know, into the single command versus having to run DNF three separate times. And it's finished committing. So let's see what happened. All right. Not a huge difference, but, you know, um, 100 megabytes. I mean, in the scheme of things, that might not make, make that, that, that big of a difference. And it's probably not the, the best example to use of that. But it does, it, it, it will add up as far as the fewer, the fewer layers that you have in your image, generally the, the, the better. And kind of goes to the com the concept of keeping things simple. You know, why have multiple layers when you can get it done in just a few layers? So the last two commands are add and copy that, that, that we're going to look at. And the the big difference but between them is is in their capabilities. The copy command, you can simply copy a file from your um, your you know, host server or workstation or whatever you're doing, you can copy that into the container image. You can do the same with add, but add can also be used for um, websites. If you need to download a file from somewhere to your image and you just want to do it directly rather than downloading the file to your um, development machine and then copying it in there, you can do that. And also add can work with uh, tar archives as well. I'm not sure about tar gzip, but we might uh, put that to the test just to, to see. Uh, I know it'll work with uh, tar archives. So let's do this. We are going to make a little file here. Um, index.html and terrible HTML. I really haven't worked with HTML since um, HTML4. I don't even know what it's up to now. Uh, we'll do H1. Oh wait, no, body, right? I know if you're watching this and you're an actual web developer, you're probably just cringing at my HTML here. Close HTML. All right, so we have that. So let's say that in our image, we want to, um, we want to copy that in and make that at least for our web server, the, um, the index.html file. So let's go back to our container file and I'm going to remove some of this stuff because really this was just for demonstration showing the run command and I don't want to, um, to change the, the user. So we'll do copy 
index.html. See if it'll let us do this. I'm going to copy it to the var www.html directory. We're not going to change into root. And we're not going to run those commands. One thing to note about copy is it is when you're dealing with paths with copy, it is expecting the basically the root of your path to be the directory that you are in with your container file. Um, I think the term for that is the is it session. No, it's, it's, it's the the um, for for the 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 source file for copy. It, it is thinking of whatever session that that you're in. But just from trial and error, I have learned that let's say you want to get something from you know slash root slash whatever and bring and bring it in there. But you're in you know we're in home eddy. That's not going to work with the uh, copy command. Might work with add. Not 100% sure with that. But copy, it's basically taking your current directory as what root would be for your file path. And I know that's not the exact um, technical definition of what's going on, but effectively that's, that's how that is going to work. So let me cap my container file one more time. All right, that is what I want. So let's do podman build. Just keep incrementing test image six. And of course that just takes a, a moment to do and it was able to copy that. I am going to try to do, so I haven't given it an instruction, but it might get that from the fact that it's a HTTPD container. So let's run um, real quick. We'll have it, we'll blow it away when we're done, our image. And we'll do, I'm pretty sure 8080 is what's used in the, or actually we can inspect this to, to be 100% sure. Again, it's getting a little bit out of the scope. But as you will find, if you're preparing for this exam, a lot of these, you know, the, there isn't much uh, focus on just this one little objective and then learn it and move on to the other things. You, you are dealing with um, a lot of objectives that, that complement one another. Test image six. I like using JQ when looking at this because this is spit out in JSON. We're going to look at config. Yeah, so 8080. 443. Okay, good. So it is going to do what we want. So we'll do podman run, ran, run rm because we want it to blow away. We are going to map port 8080 to 8080. Test image 6. I didn't put it into the background just because we don't need that. Let's go to localhost 8080. And there is our website. So the copy command copied that index.html file into the uh, var www.html directory on the image. And so when we run the image, so you know your container is the, the running image, we see our, um, our file there. So we'll stop our container. We see that it is truly gone. Because again, we use the dash r, dash dash rm for that. So... One of the big features that I mentioned a moment ago for add is you can get um, you can actual, you can use it to download files. So let's say that I'm going to go to my GitLab page, lab.com slash Eddie Jennings. So you can see some of the stuff I've worked on. It's mainly home lab stuff. And actually, I haven't done a whole lot. You can see here I haven't touched a lot of stuff since September because I've been super busy both with my job and um, life outside a job as well. But what I want to do is go to bash general. Let's say I want to copy the readme file into this. So there's a raw version. I can, yeah, there we go. Okay, good. So what I can do, go back to our container file here. I'm going to add, we're going to add an add um, command. And what I want to do is to download that file and we're going to put it into var www html readme dot we'll name it readme.txt and what should happen is it will download that file and it will copy it to the image and we should be able to see it on our little web server podman build we'll do 
call this image test image just to try this out six with the update tag see two test image six one with the tag update so let's run I'm just gonna up my way to the command because I'm a little bit lazy we use the update image and let's see what happens so localhost port 8080 our index file is there and what did I call that readme.txt hmm now if this happened on the exam I would have to do some um, some troubleshooting to deal with I imagine SE Linux is going to be an, an issue for this I wonder if we have to do hmm well what we can do Let's take a look at the real-time log, see if it shows yeah, 403. Yeah, there is probably some, some type of permission thing that I need to, to deal with with this, and I'm not going to troubleshoot it here, mainly because it's outside of the scope, and I think I've been going pretty long with this video. But the point being is, if you know this file weren't here, it would be 404. So, But the add command was able to... Um, to copy that file down and put it into there. And the last, or not the last, but one of the last things I wanted to check, let me make a couple of files here. Uh, we'll do touch file one, file two. I'm gonna make a little tar archive, create test.tgz. File one, file two. I wanted to try that with the add command. So let's go back into our container file. We're gonna be dumping this into just the temp directory. And we're going to do test, we're adding test.tgz. We'll build our container image. Let's call this test image seven. And we're gonna run our container image again. This time we're not going to worry about the um, web server aspect of it, but rather we are going to see if that, see what happened to our um, tar archive with the add directive. And we see that it did extract the tar archive into there. I wonder though, there may be an option with add tell it to not extract that. I'm actually going to, as so I've gone a little bit over anyway, let us do this with copy. I'm willing to bet copy is just going to copy the tar file into there. We'll just keep using test image seven at this point. Yep, so copy just copy the um, tar file into there. That That's what I expected. I think the other thing I wanted to test was, does this actually have to be container file? So we're going to name this container file X or rename it to container file X. Now, if we were to just run this, this should fail because it can't find container file or Docker file, but I think I can do dash F. Yeah, you can use dash F to, um, to specify to Podman which container file to use. Maybe you have a directory that has several different container files, but by default, it's going to, to just look for container file. Let me double check the objectives here, see if I can hit all the stuff I wanted. And I did. So a brief review. The from is, uh, the from instruction is going to pull down the whatever base image you're gonna use. And eventually you can write container files that are pulling down several different images. Uh, the run instruction is used to uh, just run commands uh, against your container and add and copy are both used for bringing files into your container. Copy is, a bit limited. Oh, that was the thing I wanted to test was add from with a uh, full path. So we'll do that. But uh, copy is limited to the directory tree of the current directory that, that you're in with container files. And I do want to make a note. I, I know I've said this on my other uh, practice sessions. If I do get something wrong, feel free to put that into the comments because inevitably there will be some folks that see this and try to use it as a tutorial, which again, I do try to keep the information accurate, but it is a practice session. And so if I do get something wrong, I'm sure everyone will benefit from the comment of, Hey, Eddie, you got this wrong. And this is what correct is. And then add gives you basically copy with some more features. 
So let's put this to the test. Um, going to sudo into root and we're going to echo a root, a foot, a root file. I think I'll demonstrate this. We'll go back and let's go back to our container file. Oh, we change its name back to just container file. And we are going to try to copy, watch this work, <laughs> but copy root root.txt into temp. All right, so let's try to build our image. Let's keep using test image seven. And this is going to complain to us that, you know, there's, there's no such you know, checking sources under home eddy, no such file. I, that, that I expected to have happen. And that's why I was talking about before that effectively the current directory you're in kind of becomes your, your root. Let's see if add can do it. Now you don't have that same restriction on the, the destination side. You can do whatever path you want as long as it exists or it might create directories for you. I'm not hundred percent sure on that. So let's run this again. Oh, it looks like add, add can't do it either. I figured that was the case. There are a couple of options that, that, that you can add, no pun intended, to copy. I think it works for add as well. You can do dash dash chone equals and um, basically run the chone command for whatever you're bringing into your, your container image. You might find that useful. Let's say if you, when we were doing our image earlier and we made test user one, we want test user to own the stuff. Otherwise, I think by default, the user owner, I think, think is going to be whatever user you're running your container as the group owner is going to be GID zero and the permissions will be, um, zero seven five five, but I'm hundred percent sure on that. That'll probably be something that I want to look up. There was one other thing that just crossed my mind that I think I wanted to test. No, it wasn't. It was man. So, um, one thing to remember with Red Hat exams, you obviously don't have access to external documentation or notes and such, but you do have access to internal documentation. So for container file, if you happen to forget some of the container filer, if you happen to forget some of the instructions, there is a man page five for container file that has, you know, most of the instructions that you're probably going to, to need to use. So you do have that as a reference if you happen to get stuck on the exam. Well, I know this was a uh, pretty long winded video, but th there's a lot to cover. And then as you will discover yourself, as you are uh, preparing, you know, you'll, you'll think of other things to try and experiment with to solidify your knowledge. I think if I had to take the exam today and all I had to do on the exam was demonstrate how to use these, these four directives in the container file, I would probably do pretty well with it. But I do hope that you found it useful. Again, remembering this is a practice session rather than a tutorial. If you did, make sure you click like on the video. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Thanks for your time and I will see you the next time.